Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now in the run up to CES 2019, I got an email asking if I would like to take a ride in a self-driving tractor. Of course, I immediately replied just saying, yes, tell me where, tell me when and I'll be there. And in fact, when I visited the John Deere booth, actually my eyes were opened about the role that modern technology has in modern farming. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So just let me start by saying that I am a city boy. I was born and raised in South London, and I've done very little in terms of agriculture or horticulture. Now, some of the things I'm about to tell you, you may already know if you come from a farming background or from a farming community. But for me, it was a real eye-opener to see the role of uh, modern technology in modern farming. So of course the invitation came from uh, John Deere and I went to visit their booth there at uh, CES 2019. And first of all, I was presented with this huge combine harvester. Now I've never seen a combine harvester up close. Obviously I've seen them in pictures and on videos, but it re they really are massive machines and really quite impressive. Now at this point I asked, well, you know, how much would one of these cost? And talking about all the different options and extras that you can add on to it, they did start to talk about prices of you know $400,000, $500,000. So at this point, I realized, of course, that farming is big business and there's lots of money involved. And talking to some other people later about what I saw at the booth, I did get the impression that sometimes there can be a conflict of uh, you know, kind of opinions about the big business that's involved in farming, about the business practices that you find in the different areas of farming. Now, I know nothing about that, and I'm not pretending to, but today I want to really look at the technology that's involved. The rest of it, I'm not an expert on that. So when I was talking about this combine harvester, I discovered a couple of interesting things. First of all, uh, they have a, a GPS system called Starfire, which allows them to pinpoint very accurately where their different uh, machinery is on the field. Now, a normal GPS has a kind of a uh, accuracy of three meters, uh, maybe more depending on some different kind of um, circumstances. But to drive these kind of tractors and machines down to a very high precision, John Deere have a system which allows them to get down to just a few centimeters. They said the size of a kind of a dollar coin. So that for me, that was really an amazing thing that there are commercial, not military, but commercial enterprises that are using GPS to a much, much higher accuracy. And the way they do that is around the world, they have various base stations that are known, their locations are known precisely, and they transmit extra information that can actually add in some corrections to the signals that are coming down from the GPS. And that allows them to pinpoint to within a couple of centimeters exactly what they're doing, of course, on the field as they're harvesting, as they're planting, as they're spraying, they have exact information about where those different machines are. And also talking about that, obviously, as these machines are moving along, doing all this work, they actually collect so much data. And one really interesting statistic is that John Deere have 100 megabytes a second of data being uploaded to their cloud services. So if you think about that, that means that John Deere, traditionally a farming machinery company, has invested big time in cloud services and in the software backend for running modern technology in this farming equipment, 100 megabytes a second. That's a lot of data coming in from all over uh, the world. Another thing I learned is that the combine harvester has computer vision systems built into it. So as the grain has been harvested, it gets sucked up this big tube, okay, which has got in it the kind of the, the grain, but also you can get all the other chaff that comes up with it. And you don't want that. You want as much pure grain to go into the storage facilities. And so there's actually a computer vision system that can look at the grain that's going up the tube, and it can actually detect whether there's lots of chaff with it or whether it's just pure grain. And then it can adjust various speeds and fans and things to actually improve the quality and the quantity of the grain that's going up into the storage. And it does that in real time as the grain is being taken up by this conveyor belt right up to the top of the combine harvester. And it's checking each little kind of, you know, load as it goes past to read the actual data. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. Real time computer vision for a really practical industrial application. 
Another thing they showed me was a new system that isn't yet launched that's on these spraying arms. Now, you spray for different things like trying to kill weeds, also you against different insects or different uh, kind of you know viruses and funguses that can go onto the plant. But of course, we as humans, we don't want uh, those chemicals on our food. Now, at the moment, we kind of blank blanket spray things, you know, aeroplanes or sprayers on tractors. But what actually this system does is as it's going across the field, it can identify the difference between a good plant and a weed in real time and then spray only so that the spray hits the weed and doesn't go on the plant. Now, you know, we think about the health of our health and our children's health and the chemicals and the hormones and all the things that are in our modern day food. And I thought, wow, this is a really good idea where technology can help solve this problem. Because if they can just spray that weed and get as little as possible on the actual plant, well, that's good in my books. And then after I finished looking at the combine harvester, we went out into the parking lot where I was able to take a look at this self-driving tractor. Now, the, basically the idea is this, when you are kind of going along the field, and of course in some parts of the world, in North America, there are very large fields. When you're going down that field, you want to be able to plant in a very straight line. You want to be able to spray in a very straight line. And of course you want to be able to do the harvest in a straight line. But of course, fields aren't just straight lines. They're not just like highways where everything, you know, they can be all kinds of shapes, all kinds of different rises and, and lowerings to them. They can be different obstacles that need to be go round. And so the idea here is that using this advanced GPS, using kind of computer vision, these tractors can go along doing the job they've got to do. And the next time they come to do the next job, it can follow the same route down to kind of the centimeter kind of accuracy, meaning that the spraying is happening or the planting is happening or the harvesting is happening exactly where it should be. Another thing, of course, to consider is that as a tractor is driving up and down the field, if there are plants already growing, every time the tractor wheel touches a plant and actually you know, can kill it, then that's a loss for the farmer and ultimately it's food that didn't get served for someone to eat. And with a growing population and more intensive farming going on, every single stem becomes important that we actually take it from the field all the way through to the consumer. And so part of this self-driving exercise was the fact the tractor could drive itself along uh, various plots that have been set out for it, not just straight lines, it can even kind of go, you know, left and right outside, quite complex patterns, and it can do it better than a human can do it. And that's the key, it can drive around these fields better than a human can, and the idea is it doesn't run over the plants that are already growing. So I got up into a tractor, and the, the gentleman there from John Deere was very kind to explain to me about that fact this is actually like a mobile office that even has like an infotainment system so they, you know, they can listen to music, and of course it's got access to all of the different information they need there. And then at one point he just said, let's go self-driving. He pressed a button, and the tractor just started going along, driving itself and it really was a, a good experience and it was able to navigate very well these different paths that had been uh, set out for it. And so for me, it really was a journey of discovery as I saw how modern technology, computer vision, GPS, cloud data services, and all these things combined together with one of the most basic things that we do, which is growing food for us to eat, are working hand in hand to help bring food to our tables. And really, I will not look at a loaf of bread or at a potato the same ever again, because I realize that there's a lot of technology involved in bringing that food to my table. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And well, um, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.